Chapter 1 Distributor Drive Gear. First, we're going to add the distributor drive gear. You try saying that three times after a couple of pints. Distributor distributor drive gear. Just put your finger over plug one. Rot rotate the crankshaft until you can feel compression. Oh! <laughs> it worked! Use the screwdriver through the plug hole to feel the movement of the piston. Be careful not to damage the piston or crown or plug threads in the synth head. That sounds dodgy as. Now, smart me. I actually left on the guide to find top dead center. I know top dead center is bang up the door, up the top here. So I do not need to put a screwdriver in that hole to scratch up the brand new pistons. It's got to go down here with the larger part here away from the engine, i.e. that, at two and eight. One, uh, Twelve there. Two about there, I'd probably say, about there. Right, now, I could just drop it. Don't like the idea of that either. Especially when they show a little um, a bolt to go in the top. I'm gonna lower it down with some uh, needles. Needle? <laughs> Needle, nose, pliers, between two and eight. As I turn the engine now, you can see the drive gear is actually turning. Which is good. Chapter 2 Timing. Now, a big shout out to Seaside Garage, um, who sort of explained how you actually ensure you've got the right clearances and when you actually do the clearances. And what they called it was the value of nine. So basically, what I've done here is I've quickly labelled this for, for yourself and me to make sure I don't mess it up. But when the eighth valve is down, or open, which basically means that the spring is fully compressed, you have to adjust number one, because eight plus one equals, equals nine. <laughs> yeah, quick math test. Right, um, so, like I said, when eight is fully compressed, this spring here, you sort out number one. Likewise, when seven is fully compressed, two, seven plus two, nine, six fully compressed, three, five, four, and the opposite way around, obviously. So if four is fully compressed, you can do the five, three, six, and um, all the way through. So I'm gonna start that, so let's, let's kick off. Bill elbow grease, first things first, have to turn the crank. As you turn it, you'll see all the valves moving up and down. We are waiting for valve eight to start compressing. So there we go, it's starting to compress, starting to compress. Eight is now fully compressed. So you can see now the spring is down. Yeah. So now, because eight is compressed, we adjust number one. So you take off the locking nut. Um, you put in your measuring gauge. And then what you do is you then adjust this part here, making sure you're pushing down here to make sure there's no sort of clearance. So you've got your push rod coming up here, adjusted, that's good. And once you're happy, you can add the locking nut after. I think it's a bit too loose. But I feel this is a bit of a trial and error. I think that's pretty good. All done. All these valves. Valve clearance are correct. So I will recheck these when the engine goes back into the um, into the car. But it's great progress. Chapter three. Timing cover and sump. So I've just applied gasket maker 
to the timing cover and then fit that on before I could fit the sump because I didn't quite realise it was actually a sort of rubber gasket which goes around the end of the timing cover. So on it goes. Time cover done. Right. Back to my initial plan. Get that sump on. So you have to have the timing cover on before you can put the sump back on. Because there's a groove here, which is actually part of the timing cover, which matches the groove here. And you have these gasket-like things here, which sit on there, one, there, much like that. And again, on the C1J, interestingly, you don't actually have a gasket which goes in here. So you've got to use, like the gasket maker, Interesting. Without putting any of the gasket maker <laughs> on the engine. Right, that's my next part. Now that really does look like an engine, huh? Then the crown. New gasket also added. Done. Right, engine done. For now, I'm going to pop the old spark plugs back in and um, cover up any holes uh, just because the engine is now likely to sit in the corner for a while. Um, I was recommended on getting some of those like silicon things you get for a trainers uh, just to keep moisture out um, and actually pop them in certain places like, I don't know, um, around the back near where the exhaust is just to, so, you know, avoid or to reduce the amount of moisture getting to the engine while it sits there. So I'll probably do that as well. Any other recommendations? Come on, um, let me know. Um, pop those in the comment. But that, I'm very pleased to say, and I'm sure you're quite relieved, um, is the last one really of the engine for now um, until we get to pop it back into the car, which I can't wait. So thanks for bearing with me. Um, I do appreciate it. 